Welcome to one of Canada's most expensive neighbourhoods, West Vancouver. Burrard Inlet on the banks and North Shore as your back garden. Join us as we see some of the biggest houses you might never own. Home to some of Canada's most famous celebrities, which means today our camera crew might actually fit in. And who knows, maybe uh, some people might get confused and even ask me for an autograph. <coughs> oh, let me see that. Guys, you know I can't authorise a yacht rental. I mean, maybe not the 40 footer, but kind of a 20. West Vancouver, home to the iconic North Shore, a symbol of wealth and aspirational living. But I wanted to know what it's going to take to turn this dream into reality, which is why today we'll be teaming up with realtor local Jesse Dean Cook to find out all we need to know about living it up in West Van. From the Ambleside seawall all the way to Dundrave, we'll be checking out new heights at Cypress Lookout and figuring out what the future of this established community has to offer. So grab your autograph books because you'll never know who you'll meet on today's episode of Real Tours. Jesse, thank you so much for joining us today. I am very excited to hear all about West Vancouver and the first thing I need to know is how is West Vancouver broken down? In the business, we break it down to two parts, above the highway and below the highway. So above the highway one, British properties, Whitby Estates, Cypress Park Village, they're known for the unbelievable views. Like below the highway, it's a little bit more community feel, like Ambleside, you've got smaller lots, smaller properties, but it's got a, uh, a gateway to the seawall that connects Ambleside to Dunderave and then Horseshoe Bay, where, where a lot of people are familiar with the ferry that, that takes you to the Gulf Islands. Jesse, I'd love to hear what prompted you to even get into real estate. I was working for the largest testing and certification firm in the world based in London, but I was traveling about 100, 150,000 miles a year. My wife was a singer, so she was abroad a lot as well. Um, and as much as we loved that lifestyle, eventually kids were kind of part of our discussion. And uh, I met a guy who's dating one of my wife's friends at the time he's like you should be in real estate he showed me west vancouver kind of what we're doing today and i fell in love with it and made the jump in uh, 2013 to uh moving uh, my wife and i to dunderave and um kicked off our uh, our newfound career so your move to dunderave coincided with you being a realtor I'm, i feel very strongly you have to be a part of the community that you're working in and living in um, or else you're not very authentic how can I live in Coquitlam and tell people how great West Vancouver is and the North Shore if I don't actually live there? Jesse, I've loved talking to you, but I cannot wait to get our first stop, which is... Well, our first stop today is going to be Ambleside Beach. Excited to show you everything that's here. I'll grab the surfboard. <laughs> Sounds good. This place is great. It sure, it sure is. I mean, amazing coffee shops like Crema, great restaurants, the seawall. Uh, it's, it's a very active place. So Jesse, what is Ambleside Community? Well, the Ambleside Community, it's a vibrant beach community. As you can see here, we've got the seawall that tapers all the way to the beach, great parks, lots of things for all the family to do as well. Amazing restaurants, you know, Earl's Ambleside and Cora of Fred's here as well. Um, it's a very international crowd here too. You'll hear lots of different languages as you, as you walk around, but uh, yeah, an amazing community. Well, that was my next question. Who is living in Ambleside? Everyone's living in Ambleside. So it, it's that walkability. But a lot of people that want to be in Ambleside want that uh, extension to cafes and shopping and restaurants and seeing their friends. But really it's this, it's this seawall connectivity that uh, the people really desire here. How are we seeing that diverse and community reflected in the types of property you can get here? Well, in Ambleside specifically, it's more of your smaller lots, kind of 6,000 square foot lots. You've got a lot of condominiums, some townhouses. There is a plan in place with Ambleside to have more diversity, um, kind of find that missing middle, if you will. Um, so we want to see more families down here in the future. But uh, right now is a, a various amount of real estate for people to own, uh, all different price points as well, from you know $20 million all the way down to about 500 grand. So anyone is living here and anyone can live here. I'm so happy you said that because one of the big questions I have about today's tour is how obtainable is West Vancouver for someone like me who isn't a multimillionaire? 
West Vancouver isn't the cheapest place in town, that's for sure, but there are lots of different options. I mean, um, you can get a, uh, a decent house with a smaller lot that is in the A-plus location, as opposed to a really nice house that's 30, 40, 60 minutes outside of town. So a lot of people will trade that off. We also see a lot of people come to West Vancouver for the schools. So a lot of parents will bring their kids into the system, um, potentially not have as nice of a house as they could, 40, 50, 60 minutes out of the city, but have their kids in a safe environment. Ambleside, beautiful beach living with all the amenities of downtown Vancouver at your doorstep. I can't wait to see how it compares to our next point, which is... Dundere. Our next point is Dundere, that's correct, yes. And I hear that we are meeting a special guest there. Yeah, our special guest is uh, my wife, Amanda. She runs all the, uh, the marketing and, and is the creative extension of our team. Uh, but she's at Barola, which is a lovely new restaurant in, in Dundrave. So um, let's go have some lunch. Oh, let's go have some lunch. Maybe she can help me out with my Instagram account. I need a <laughs> little bit more help again some followers. Okay, so first off, how cool is it to hear that West Vancouver isn't just for millionaires? Like Jesse said, it ain't the cheapest in town. But in comparison to the surrounding areas, including downtown Vancouver, living in Ambleside doesn't seem as far-fetched as it once did. Also, Jesse wasn't lying. Crema is absolutely one of the best coffees I've had in a long time. I'm curious, like, it's so much work. It's become so evident to me that being uh, one of the top realtors consumes your life. Why are you sticking with it? I'm sticking with real estate right now as I roll by my sign right there um, <laughs> because I've put 10 years of extremely hard work into it. And for anyone who thinks that there's a shortcut in this profession, I I'm here to say that that's just simply not the case. I had a two-year ripcord. If this didn't work out, I go back to corporate, continue along. Um, but I worked every single day, 100-hour weeks, and we're at a point now where the business is, is solid, but I'm really excited to see what the next 10 years will be. Only a few blocks up from Ambleside is Dundrave, a community that, while close in proximity, has a whole other vibe to it. I, for one, am also very excited to meet Jesse's wife, Amanda, as she spearheads the marketing for Jesse, and I'm hoping we'll have an interesting take on this neighborhood. It is so wild how we've only gone like 10 blocks, but the whole vibe seems to have changed. Yeah, certainly from Ambleside to Dunderave, uh, there's definitely a lot of differences. Uh, we're in the core of, of Dunderave right here from 24th to 25th. So this is the heart of this uh, amazing area. What I'm really curious to know is how does Dunderave differ from Ambleside? Well, Dunderave, in terms of the type of houses, you're getting a lot larger lots here. So we're seeing a bit more uh, larger houses. You get amazing views. We also now start to have some waterfront properties, which are some of the most amazing, mind-blowing properties uh, in Canada, I would say. But it's, it's just got a nice vibe. It's got a homey vibe. Everyone knows each other. It's just a really safe feeling community and the walkability as well. You're not in your car having to drive around. You can walk four or five blocks, get your groceries, get a coffee, get your hair cut, go to a nice restaurant. And again, you're, you're, you're seeing people all the time that you know. What are we seeing that's unique in terms of the developments that are coming into West Vancouver? 10 years ago, West Vancouver was building a lot of spacious mansions, but that's not kind of what a lot of the buyers want right now. So you'll see anything from 1,000 square foot to 1,800 square feet, um, but not these 9,000 square foot palaces anymore. Even on the waterfront, we're not gonna see 3,000 square foot condos that are gonna be built. It's a bit more every day, um, which will allow more people to purchase as well. And I hear you have a personal connection to Dundrave? Yeah, Dundrave was the first place that my wife and I moved here when I started in real estate 10 years ago. Actually, she's, she's here right now. We should meet her and kind of get the uh, personal side of Dundrave, if you will. Ooh, let's hear a little bit more about the lifestyle of this community. Amanda, it is so lovely to meet you. We've been spending the day with Jesse. I'd love to hear your thoughts, though, about this community. Jess and I just love this neighborhood, and it's really become a part of uh, our story about our journey on the North Shore. Tell me why you think this neighborhood in particular is where you want to invest in and where you want to commit yourself to. So when we talk about investing in the neighborhood, we want to put our time and our efforts and our money into the areas that we see potential for growth. And so Dundarev is 
just such an incredible community. Uh, we want there to be more young families living here. We want to bring that lovely energy, that youthful energy as well, as honoring where the neighborhood has come from. And so, you know, part of that is our, our journey with this amazing restaurant called Barolo. We actually um, were approached about becoming investors and we said it was a pretty quick and easy yes. Yeah, you know, sure. we were yeah. like, yeah, we're going to be um, a part of this neighborhood in a more substantial way. What would you say to those people who claim you lose a social connection by mm. coming to West Van? I would say that maybe that was true in the past, but there's this effort that's being made to create a social epicenter in Dundarave. What was missing before was, you know, somewhere where you could go and actually create a bit of a vibe. You could have sort of a later evening, you could have some drinks, you could have some social connection. And what's taking place now and what we're actively trying to be a part of is changing that dynamic, allowing for us to have somewhere that's got that same energy perhaps as a Yale Town Street, um, somewhere that still has the feeling of safety and comfort, connection to the outdoors and nature. And this is the next step in our sort of journey to creating something that feels right for us and can bring all of that proper energy to our neighborhood. Amanda, it is so exciting to hear you talk with such passion about this community and it is in Infectious. Yay! <laughs> Jesse, I hear we have one last place to go before we see some amazing real estate. Yeah, so we're going to go to Cypress Village where the views are going to just absolutely blow your mind. Uh, we'll meet up with uh, Amanda later at the real estate, but uh, yeah, let's take a ride. Looking forward to it. The only time I've been to Cypress was to go skiing, so there you uh, go. let's check it out. <laughs> I feel like there's no greater seal of approval than someone investing their own money into a community. Bar Olo is more than a restaurant. It's Jesse and Amanda's commitment to a neighborhood and lifestyle that they want to build. If even 0.5% of this community feel the same, then I'm certain Dundrave is not going to be the hidden gem it currently is for much longer. What I'd love to know is what has made West Vancouver be one of the most expensive and sought after neighborhoods within not only Canada, but like North America as a whole. Well, what's positioned West Vancouver is that ultra luxury kind of mecca, if you will, is a scarcity of, of the product. So the waterfronts only have about 500 plus houses in all of West Vancouver. You're facing south, it's very uh, protected, you're, you're close to downtown. And then on the flip side, above the highway, you've got some world-class views. Right at the doorstep of Cypress Mountain, you're an hour and 15, an hour and 30 from Whistler. So that's a, a big reason why the, the high prices. Fun fact, Cypress Mountain was the first trip I made out of the city when I landed in Canada in 2021. Sure, it was snowing and I had a pair of skis strapped to my feet, but those views are year round. And I remember noticing even back then, the new developments springing up on the corner of the hill. So I, for one, am excited to hear more. This is the other side of the highway. This is above the highway. Uh, we're in Cypress Village, or what will be Cypress Village. The uh, upper highway is about 4,000 acres that have been developed over the years, but this is about a 350 acre parcel that is gonna be developed, but it's, it's gonna be fantastic once this is constructed. So Jesse, is this the future of West Vancouver? It's certainly part of it, I mean, it's it's a component that's been missing for for decades really the connectivity to cypress bowl and having you know a great restaurant vibe for people after they ski there'll be a, a public school here there'll be some fields and things like that but they're looking around 3700 properties give or take a whole mixture you've got condos you've got market rentals some townhouses some smaller houses as well so i think what it's going to do it will service young families staying in west vancouver who otherwise would have to leave you know five, 10, 15 years. It's gonna take a little while, but the BPPs or British Pacific Property Group, they, uh, they know what they're doing. What is the main differences then between those beachside communities in Ambleside and Dundere versus this kind of mountainy feel? For a lot of my buyers, they want a close-in view or they want this just absolutely massive panoramic view. So as you can see, you've got Mount Baker downtown, you've got all the Gulf Islands, you can see into Washington State. It, it just feels like you're, you know, like a bird, like a seaplane that's, that's traveling by here right now. Uh, a little bit more private, um, but having said that, the village hope is to bring people together. We're talking for some buyers, we're talking downsizers, 
in your opinion, what is the investment potential for a development like this? Well, I, I think it's huge. I mean, I think at the end of the day, there's only so much land here in, in West Vancouver. And, and as the uh, 4,000 acres that were purchased back in the 1930s kind of dissipates and goes around the corner, um, you cannot move up, okay? You, you're limited in how far up. Of course, we're limited in how far we go down. So I think investing here, you're gonna be, you're totally fine long-term. Jesse, it is so great to see this land finally being put to use and to a good use. I can't see what else you have to show me today. Well, if you've got time, Stephen, I'd love to show you an estate right by the waterfront here in uh, Lighthouse Park. It's an incredible craftsman, uh, steps to the beach. If you've got time, I can show you. Steps to the beach sounds like my dream, yes. Hello. Hi, sweetie. How's it going? Great. Good. So, Ooh. what do you think? Guys, this, this place is nice. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, West Vancouver, I, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> so, is this type of property typical of what we see around West Vancouver? Well, the beauty of it is it's not because there's no typical type of property in West Vancouver. Um, we're in Caulfield right now, a lot more kind of outdoorsy. Um, unlike Ambleside and, and Dunraven that we're in, more of your grid system, this is anything but. So it's a really interesting um, type of real estate to, to show because there are so many intricacies that you just don't see in that spec type build. In this particular property, what are some of those amazing unique features that we're not getting anywhere else? Well, there's a number of them. I mean, for instance, the stove is handmade from France. It's La Cornu. It's about $200,000. There's an amazing uh, temperature-controlled wine cellar with hundreds of bottles. You've got a um, powder room on the main floor with a vanity from a palace in Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, there is two offices here. One could be actually beautiful for a grand uh, piano. The other is an oval office. It's uh, um, reflective of the Oval Office in uh, the White House. So uh, lots of very unique attributes of this house that a, a new owner would love. A lot of ammunition yeah. for you to tell a story however you want, it seems. Exactly, exactly. With these types of unique homes, we have the opportunity to showcase all of these beautiful amenities that come with the home, and it certainly makes for wonderful storytelling. How much is storytelling important in the selling of houses out here? Mm, storytelling is everything in the marketing of these houses. Because of their unique nature, what I do is I come to the home, I meet the current families, I ask them, what did you fall in love with this property for? You know, what is it that drew you in? And then we go through and we try to identify what that feeling is. And then what we specialize in with our marketing is we actually create what we call a movie trailer for each home. And what that is is a small little snippet and we try to um, allow people to feel the main emotion of that home and then it draws them in to be able to see the rest of the marketing. And then what our main goal, of course, is to have them come and visit the house in person because we feel that it's the most important part of the marketing is the actual emotional connection to the home. Thank you so much for taking the time to show me around West Vancouver. It has been fascinating to see the difference between the beachside villages of Dunderave and Ambleside versus those new developments at Cyprus. And of course, all roads lead to here. I'm not quite ready to buy just yet, but I think I know where to go when I am. Well, listen, we're not quite finished with you yet, Stephen. The best is yet to come. Uh, from our marketing stand, what we love to do is showcase the best of West Vancouver from the water. So come with us. This sounds exciting. <laughs> from the water, okay. Hi, I'll get my, uh, get my swim trunks on. <laughs> this is so cool. I don't think I've ever seen property being shown this way, guys. This is, this is special. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, this is the only way to show properties from the water because from the street, it's just not obvious that the houses that we see behind us are actually what are there. So uh, we'll do this time to time with clients. It's always important for us to showcase it from the water because this is how the houses were designed to be seen. Like Jesse mentioned, from the street, you sort of just see that gate, but this is really where the magic happens. And this is what people are coming to West Vancouver for, is for this combination of luxury listings partnered with the connection to the ocean, to the mountains. This is West Vancouver at its finest. Guys, this is so unique and special. I only have one question left for you both. How fast can this thing go? <laughs> well, I Let's guess we'll go. find out. Let's go, Robbie. <laughs> there are some days you wish would never end. Today was one of those days. Cruising around the Burrard Inlet, wind blowing through our hair while window shopping some of the most desirable properties in North America was something special. Made all the more so thanks to our two amazing guides. Jesse and Amanda. 
Jesse's knowledge and commitment to five-star service, coupled with Amanda's storytelling smarts, makes them one of the most dynamic power couples this side of the Fortnite parallel. All in all, I've loved my day of great coffee and grand mansions. But most of all, I've loved hearing that West Vancouver isn't just reserved for the uber wealthy. Sure, you might be living a little more IKEA than Swedish Palace for a while, but when you see how great the community is this side of the bridge, maybe that's a compromise you're willing to make. And who knows, that palace life might not be as far off as you think.